Hello world, my name is James and this is going to be my first YouTube video uh, because that's something I've decided to do now. Uh, I don't really have any uh, specific plans, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll with it and uh, that's gonna be my attitude. Uh, moving forward with this, I'm a concept artist working in video games. Okay, so basically I really like uh there's this kind of pocket uh on youtube that i that's how i see it there's like a pocket of people who don't like uh, the internet <laughs> it seems um like youtubers who are who are telling you to not spend time on youtube or social media and i know that's hypocritical but i'm kind of in that same in that same boat i actually don't like consuming any of this stuff uh, but for some reason, I feel a need to participate. Um, and so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, the reasons for that is I think I, I would like to actually communicate uh, with people um, more directly. I, I feel in the past I've had you know Twitter and Instagram and before that Facebook and then ArtStation. Um, Twitter's never really done anything for me. Um, Instagram did like years ago, but you know, they had big changes and it doesn't really quite work that well anymore. Facebook was probably the best for a small time period. And then it, it changed. Um, and so the past couple of years, art station has been the main effort for me, uh, for putting myself out there and, and getting jobs. I haven't ever really kept up with it. I don't even know if it's possible to keep up with it. Uh, I'm so out of the game, I don't really know how any of this stuff works. But I, I feel that YouTube might be a better uh, venue for me uh, because I, I would almost rather sit here and ramble in front of a camera than do whatever it is I have to do uh, for other platforms. So I want an audience uh, so I can make stuff and give it to those people and they will know about it. That's kind of how this whole thing works, right? So <clears throat> I'm kind of posting into the void now and nobody really cares about uh, you know who I am and what I'm doing. And I, I actually really love that. That's my, you know, that's, that's like the ultimate goal, but it's not very realistic um, to be basically hidden away from everybody. And not have to worry about doing any of this stuff. I'm excited about the potential of growing an online community um, to share projects that I'm working on that I actually care about. Uh, for instance, I'm working on a comic right now. Uh, I plan to just release all of it free on the internet. And I want it to be like the thing that I made by myself and I wasn't paid by some company to do it, to fit their taste or to fit a market or anything. It's just a pure, uh, like fun and expression. I'd like to, I'd like to have a community around, uh, what I'm doing. Cause I, I plan to do a lot more projects now. Um, but lately I've been thinking about who, who do I actually want to see? Or who, who do I want to actually see, uh, what I'm working on? You know, you always want people who have the power to hire you to see what you're working on if you want to get a job but if you're working on something for yourself you want somebody who appreciates that that project you're working on right um and i'm excited about that because i want to make things uh myself right for people and the world to look at um because right now when, you, when you're a concept artist in games you're really having to cater to what a company needs and, and that's how you have to sell yourself. When you make personal work, you really never make personal work. You're making portfolio pieces to hope for the potential that somebody might need uh, like your services, like what you're offering, what you're saying that you can do. Um, I like doing that and that does not, I don't really have a problem with it, but I think just the nature of being an artist, you wanna create your own thing. That's how I feel. Uh, I want to make stuff. This is all about me making stuff and having a community to connect with. 
Because that's that's kind of what I got into this for. I think that's what a lot of people got into this for as far as uh, concept art. Um, and at least for me personally, I feel like there's a kind of a safety blanket or net or whatever with working for a company, even though that's it's all just an illusion. Working for a game company is highly unstable, but it seems like it's stable and it gives you the illusion of stability. But that's not really the truth. So gearing your entire creative output towards trying to find a job at a game studio um, might not be the safest bet. You still got to do it. And I want to do something different than that. I've been thinking about how you actually survive uh, as an artist or thinking of myself as an artist. Am I even an artist or am I just like a, per a person in like the, the grand scheme of, you know, making a video game? I guess that's like the building a cathedral, all these nameless people, you know, work together to build this thing bigger than themselves. That's kind of what video games is, uh, which I, I don't, I don't really mind you know, contributing to that, you know, as part of the team, but you also always have the desire to make something of your own, uh, especially if you're like a creative person working in a creative industry. I mean, don't you always think of yourself wanting to put your, your own voice out there for whatever reason? Okay. So my, my journey to where I am now briefly, uh, I, I started off working on, just random whatever projects in a time when there wasn't a whole lot of people doing it. The industry was pretty new. The idea of concept art was pretty new. The, the general public didn't have a clue what that was. I didn't even have a clue what it was just a few years before I started. Um, I didn't take concept art seriously because I didn't know about it until I was honestly in my early twenties. I didn't know about it until I think, I think Skyrim, was the first time I heard about it. And at that point I already had a, a completely different career. Yeah. I took online. I just did the, you know, your typical take online courses and work really hard and then, you know, post your stuff on the internet and then people contact you and, and you work on, you know, crummy jobs and you, you work your way up to get something you know serious. And I've been very lucky to have, I think my first like real, like big boy, concept art job was Dun dungeon hunters champions with game loft. Um, somehow that transitioned into crash bandicoot four. And that was really the best, uh, time that I've had in my career. Uh, it probably will never get better than that. Um, in, in a lot of different ways, not just for me, but for a lot of people, uh, and for probably gamers too, but <clears throat> During that time, I think I kind of, I, I came from a place where I was really struggling to get by to a place where I was like really comfortable. And, and I think that made me too comfortable. And I, I stopped, uh, I stopped posting anything. I stopped making personal work uh, for the internet. I mean, I was working on a lot of things for myself, uh, but I didn't, I didn't care what anybody thought. And I had this idea of like, maybe I can just like retreat and disappear and nobody will ever see me and things will work out because of connections and all this stuff. I even thought like, what if I just email people, uh, myself instead of ever, you know, advertising myself. Um, and actually it, it actually worked for a, a couple of years. I think I've been going, uh, I've had that mindset for maybe like four, four, maybe not quite five, but four years. Uh, but things are different now cause it's a lot more saturated. Yeah. And, the times are tough. I think when I was comfortable, the industry was comfortable. There's just a lot more money going in. Everybody was making, um, you know, Genshin Impact and Sea of Thieves and, you know, all these like free to play loot box games. Um, and so there was a lot of, a lot of money coming in from so many different angles uh, that it was, it was easy to get a job during that time. As you're seeing now with you know, all the layoffs and stuff, the industry is going to rethink how it's, how it's going to survive and, and do things a lot differently than before. So the days of kind of just hiring anybody to make a bunch of skins and houses for like big projects, 
those those are kind of going away and i mean i don't know what the future is going to be like but you know we'll see i think it'll be something different but regardless as all this is to say is um things are going to be a lot more competitive moving forward so i can't i can't be hidden anymore um and there's a lot more people and that sounds pretty grim right like the the talent is extremely high and there's way more extremely talented competent people than there's jobs and then you have all the people coming in and, and trying to enter into the industry and that's going to be very i mean i don't know how those people are going to do it um, but that's <laughs> that's a whole other topic uh, but as for me i kind of think like okay so what do you want to do do you want to build you know a whole new portfolio and to try to attract a company to work with you um you know maybe i'll probably try to do that a little bit i have a lot of experience um but i think everybody so does everybody else everybody has you know more experience than me even though i've been working for several years on you know big projects that doesn't really mean much anymore um so i'm not really saying i'm giving up or i'm tapping out i'm just saying like i, I can't you can't put all your eggs in one basket you know what i mean i can't just say hey you know, hire me to work on your project because that project might not be there. They might not have enough money to pay people. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of reasons. And so I can see my people turn to YouTube or teaching or whatever. Um, and as for me, um, yeah, I'm here. I am making a YouTube video and I have no interest in teaching. Uh, but I do kind of want to branch out into other things and I've been thinking, okay, so I could do comic books or video games. And by doing video games, I mean my own. And that's something I've tried to do for the past couple of years. I've been learning a lot of, uh, you know, game engines and start off with game maker. And I, I piddled around with that for a long time. Actually, that's what I was doing during crash. I would spend my free time learning how to code in the game maker language. And I made a fun, bunch of fun little projects. Uh, then I, I finally, you know, stepped up and evolved into to the Godot game engine, which is free and open source. And I, I truly love that engine and it's, uh, it's a blast. I, I feel working with, uh, trying to make your own little game project is probably more fun than actually playing games. And I highly encourage it. The problem was I was spending a ton of time doing it and I was learning, you know, the programming and all this stuff. I wasn't really making a whole lot of art. Uh, on the side and so i i came to the realization that maybe that's not a good idea for me to do if i want to keep improving as an artist is to focus so much on game development um and so lately I, I've, I've come to the realization that the real thing that I, that can best meet my goals uh given my my skill set and my abilities is comic books um that's a that's a troubled industry on its own and quite frankly it probably doesn't uh, it's probably even less secure than the video game industry in fact I, I guarantee it without even doing research there's no doubt in my mind that it's a harder field to operate in but it's wholly within my means i can start a project from the beginning and finish it within a reasonable amount of time completely by myself without help from anybody uh help would be nice right like if i got a publishing deal for something in the future i would love that but at the end of the day you don't really need it you know uh same thing with video games you can technically just make a video game all by yourself without help from anybody but, you know you do the coding you do the art you do the sound you, you can learn how to compose music you can do all that stuff uh, but that's not realistic in, in a time sense. Like, do you really want to spend like, I don't know, 10 years learning all these different disciplines to make your dream game? Some people do do that and it works out great. But to me, I, I would like to get a project done in like one year. Um, I hope you can't hear my son screaming, <laughs> but I might, I might have to pause this. Okay. <clears throat> We're back. Um, I kind of lost track of what I was talking about, but I, working on projects yourself, as opposed to working for a big company. I mean, that's, that's something that I think about and admire. 
uh, people who do those kinds of things. And I, I like to get involved in doing that myself. Uh, I don't really have a bunch of game dev friends. Like I don't know programmers and all that stuff to, to, to team up and work on a project. I, I'd have to find people. Um, I'd have to find new people and meet with new people to do that, which is always a possibility. And I do think that's something that I would like to do in the future is team up with a small group of people who want to make a game, you know, with a mindset of like, we're making, we're making something like we're making a piece of art. We're making something to put out into the world. So making a comic, um, I, it's something I've been dreading for a very long time. I don't, I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's like the responsibility of like d doing it all yourself and you're the director and you know, the writer and all these different things. Um, but what I like, I've had, I had to force myself to do it. Basically my main motivation was reading about Miyazaki making Nausicaa and how he hated it and he dreaded it, but it, he made this huge tome, you know, of uh, the Nausicaa manga, a graphic novel, comic, whatever you want to call it, but it's huge. And it's a lot of work. And if I remember correctly, I think it took him over like 10 years and he did it in his free time or in between projects um, with a lot of, uh, <laughs> with, I guess, dread towards doing it. And so I was motivated by that. It's like, you know, I kind of need to be the same way. If I want to get this done, I just need to like, you know, buckle up and do it, whether I want to do it or not. And that's the attitude that I took and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I, I, after forcing myself to do it, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I like the freedom that you have, like, as I'm drawing, I'm like, man, I don't have to worry at all how to like rig this character or if it fits on somebody else's rig or anything like that. And if I don't want to design something then I could just cover it up with a shadow or just not show it. Like you just have so much freedom to just do whatever you want. Uh, but in a comic book, man, you can do anything. You can do anything you want. You can make, you know, a person riding a dragon or whatever. And, you know, nobody has to model that. You don't need a team of people to realize your vision. You can just do it yourself. So I find that appealing. I find that really liberating. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. So we'll see how that goes. I guess I'll talk about my approach to how I'm doing a lot of things now. Uh, I'm doing this YouTube channel completely shooting from the hip and hoping for the best. Uh, the, the problem, probably a lot of people have this problem, but I know I have this problem is that you sit around and you just plan do, instead of doing things. Um, and so I'm trying to cut that out as much as I can and just kind of learn as I go with, uh, with a lot of things that I do. And that includes doing this. I'm just recording myself talking into this webcam um, without really much of a plan. I'm kind of rambling and I'm, you know, I, I stop and I cut at this point when I'm talking to you now, I think I've restarted, you know, several times cause it was going nowhere. Um, I'm finding this very, <laughs> very awkward <laughs> to, t to talk to the, to this camera. Anyway, I kind of, I kind of feel that way with personal projects. Like you really shouldn't wait around for anybody. Uh, to give you permission to do it or, you know, yourself holding you back by, by planning. Um, Cause I always think back, you know, when I was a kid, my favorite comic was Spawn and I didn't know about the Marvel method is, which is basically you just draw a page and figure out the words later. And, and Spawn kind of, kind of does that. Like I saw Todd McFarlane's process on some old nineties VHS thing that was on YouTube and he just takes a few notes on a piece of paper and then he draws a whole page. Like he doesn't plan anything. Those artists in the nineties that were huge, a lot of them didn't plan Jack, you know what I mean? But so that gives me inspiration of like, you can make, you don't need to plan. You can just do it. Yeah. Would it be better if you plan? Yeah. But then it's not, it won't get done. It's better to have something to have nothing at all. That's how I'm approaching everything. So with this, the YouTube thing, it would be cool if I had a better mic and a bigger camera uh, and a better everything, right? But then I'm just not going to do it, right? I like to run in the mornings and I don't stretch because if I stretch, I'm not going to do it. It just, you just go. <laughs> um, 
So we'll see how it works. Hopefully that could be some source of entertainment that you can see how things change and improve. And after I do this video, I'll, I'll know what it's like to edit a video. Uh, how much time does that take? Do I really want to spend the time doing that? And kind of refine a whole process of, of getting things out in the less, or getting things out in the least um, destructive way <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, the work that I do during the day. I am incredibly busy. I don't have time to do this, um, but I'm doing it anyway. Um, so I'm gonna, I want to see how I can minimize the impact of shooting videos because it, it, it intrudes in a lot of time uh, that I don't, I don't really have. I'm going to try to make things easy for myself. Okay. Plans. Okay. So YouTube, um, there's like a, like a formula you can follow to make videos and I did a little bit of research, right. To how to do all this. And it's all the same stuff. And it makes me understand YouTube better. I mean, you basically, it's like, this is how you make your video and your thumbnail and you, you put your things here and you, your things there. And we talk about this and it's, it is kind of a pyramid scheme, honestly. And there's a lot of YouTubers that are just YouTube about make YouTube videos about making YouTube videos. And that just, I don't know, it's kind of funny, but I don't really care about a lot of that stuff. And I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to have a more of an honest, uh, approach to everything and just kind of talk and the channels that I like on YouTube are like super tiny, um, and not entertaining. They're just dudes talking about stuff that I'm interested in. Uh, I think about my favorite YouTube channel show, actually I don't know what the channel is called. The show is called Warhammer weekly. It's just two dudes who talk about Warhammer, sometimes three dudes and there's no, there, there's no special anything like their equipment sucks, but I care about the topic, you know, what they're saying. Like, I want to know what they, they think of the new release or something. Um, but I don't really see, I don't really see that with art so much like on art YouTube. It all seems kind of the same to me, but, but I don't really watch art YouTube. So there could be lots of great things that I don't know about. Um, but I feel like in the comic book space, there is a, a couple of channels of just people being really authentic and, you know, indulging in something that they like, uh, but with very, very few followers. There's a new channel that I like that has like 500 followers and the guy's like super professional and talking with pros about really specific career things that like a general public doesn't care about, but I care about. And I like that stuff. And I'll that's all it is to say is that I'll probably try to fit into more of that kind of, uh, space as, as a narrow appeal to a few people who care <laughs> about what I'm doing. Um, who those people are, I, I don't really know. Um, we'll figure that out as I go. I'm, I'm kind of thinking I'm probably just going to appeal to people in the same boat as me. Um, you know, younger middle-aged dudes, <laughs> uh, you know, professionals, you know, there's, I know there's a market out there for like, Hey, I, I worked in this industry. Let me teach you how to get in this industry. And that's what a lot of art YouTube is. And it's encouraging a lot of stuff, but I, I don't, I don't want to participate in that. Honestly, there's so much of that out there. And, um, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not really within my interest. Uh, I, I would like to do, um, live streams i think uh of me just working on my comic and hanging out with people and that's a lot that's a lot of the stuff that i like too just uh, i think it's like daniel warren johnson he's a really awesome comic artist you know he just sits down uh, every friday for like an hour he works on his comic or does some little drawing that he has to do and and gets on with his life you know um i think that i think that looks awesome but yeah that's something that i'll figure out with the metrics and the audience. And I think YouTube tells you a lot of that stuff. Uh, I just know that I'm personally like when I see somebody who's like my age, uh, on YouTube, I'm like, I'm there for that, you know, like nothing against people who are younger than me, but, um, 
there's just different <laughs> there's just different stuff that appeals to different people and I, I like a slower pace i don't like the noises and the music and all all that stuff um, so that gives me hope of like man you can just uh you can make something that you yourself would want to watch and then there will be people out there and they'll be engaged because the only reason they're have eyes on you in the first place is because they can relate to what you're doing and therefore that you can relate to them. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I guess I'll list off a couple. I wrote down, I took some notes. That's why I keep looking over into the other screen. I took some notes of some YouTube channels that I like. Um, I wrote middle-aged dads. Yeah, that's my favorite. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I wrote down, I noticed like a lot of people on YouTube like talk about their problems and stuff. Uh, when I hear a young person talk about their problems, it's hard to relate to. But when I when I hear like a middle-aged dad talk about the, like literally using the exact same words that the young person uses, then I'm like, yeah, I feel you, man. Like I really, I connect a lot more. Just It's just, it's just a reality. You know what I mean? It's the same way like a young person listens to the problems of some older person, they're probably like, I, uh, you know, they're not just so interested, right? But then they hear the exact same words from someone younger and they're like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Like, that's just a reality. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm trying to be more, uh, more sympathetic <laughs> towards people. And I don't know. It's just a funny observation I'm throwing out there. But um, I, I wrote a lot of dad stuff in my notes. I really like Andrew WK. That's something I wrote. I, um, I like his energy. I went to his concert when I was younger and I thought it was great. And I, so much I put it in my notes because I saw he's on YouTube just like saying motivational things, which I think is pretty cool. Um, oh, I like game the game dev community. I think they do a great job of their their vlogging or their dev vlogs. Those are really cool. I, I kind of want to try to do something like that with, uh, with anything that I'm working on. Um, I don't know how it's going to work out because it, it seems like they take a lot of footage and edit it and make it nice and digestible. And that just takes more time that I don't really have, but maybe I can work something out. Like, I think like, again, I don't want to teach anybody, but I do think it'd be cool to kind of show like behind the scenes of like, this is the process that I'm doing now, uh, especially with my comment. Cause I I've come up with a process, but it's, it's, you know, it's serviceable, but it's total garbage. And I eventually have another process. And I think it'd be kind of cool to show like, okay, this is how I started. This is what I'm doing now. This is what I plan to do. And, you know, for people who are interested in that, maybe people doing the same thing. I, I just like to hear what other people are doing who are doing similar things to me. So yeah, video game devlogs do a great job at that. I'd like, I'd like to mimic that a little bit. Um, some people that I like, um, uh, oh, <laughs> I, I don't know where this would go, whatever, but you know, when I, I see artists, YouTube, I, I just see like a lot of like really young women, um, doing it and they have like a very certain vibe. I don't see a lot of like, um, like older dudes doing it. <laughs> I, I don't really want to operate in that space, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm really inspired by how these girls, um, like their work ethic and what they, how they, you know, they create these like, you know, huge communities and then they sell their books and do all that stuff. I, I just wrote that down as something I'm pretty inspired by. Um, YouTube, another YouTuber I like modern vintage gamer. I love that. Like that's, that's like kind of the vibe I'd like to go for. Like he's just talking about something that he cares about and it's like really low key. I think he does have music in his videos, but it's like really chill. Like it's not, it's not spazzy, you know? Um, I like Rob Liefeld's, uh, uh, Rob observations. I think it's a podcast that he has. I think that's pretty cool. Cause it's just him. It's like what I'm doing right now. He's just rambling about the past. I think that'd be kind of cool to talk about, uh, some past experiences and just, just talk about it. Like, what was it like to work on a certain game or something? Uh, that could be a cool, kind of easy thing to do um, that people would probably find value in. I like the idea of making really stupid thumbnails. So I might play around with that. I know you're supposed to make the thumbnail before you make the video. And I haven't even 
approach the thumbnail or even thought of it like like i don't even have a topic for this video even though I've, i'm already done making it basically um but I, I mean i look forward to really stupid um thumbnails i don't i don't like gimmicks but man i love stupid clickbaity thumbnails so I, I would like to try my hand at that whatever recording myself talking to a camera this is super awkward it's very unnatural it's very weird I, I tried to record myself drawing a smiley face it was so awkward looking at the camera and looking at my hand in real life that i couldn't i couldn't even draw a proper u-shape um that's not good <laughs> but that's something to get used to this is extremely awkward i did so many takes uh, earlier that I had to stop or I didn't know where I was going. This is not like talking to a person or talking to yourself in your own head at all. This is, uh, this is totally different. Uh, but I'm, as, as I'm doing it, I feel like I'm getting more comfortable or I wouldn't even say comfortable, just like used to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's very strange and alien. Uh, I kind of figured it'd be like talking to a buddy. Um, it doesn't feel like talking to a friend. It kind of feels more like like as I'm doing this, I realize it, it sounds like uh, it feels like like Star Trek the captain's log kind of thing. Like you're, you're basically journaling out loud, um, which is kind of cool. But then you you can't really edit what you're saying. You could write a script, but then again, if I wrote scripts, that means I wouldn't make videos because I'd be too busy planning. Um, so that's not going to happen. I think I'm always going to have to shoot from the hip. Otherwise, there'll be nothing. But we'll see how it goes. Uh I, I had a lot of awkward uh, get up here. Um, I don't know if my my microphone is good, or I tried. I did do a little test to see how I talked on like uh, different microphones that I have. This was the best one. It's a little snowball sitting on a stack of books. My webcam I think is awkwardly high, but it's the best angle that I could come up with. I would like probably something that's more eye level, but uh, I'm not going to fidget with that right now. I just need to you know, make the make this video and get on with my day. There's some challenges. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's it for me. I don't expect anybody to see this video. Um, but if you have any thoughts, yeah, let me know, especially if you want to know like what, like what would you want me to talk about? Uh, and I'll talk about it maybe depending on what it is. And, uh, you know, we'll, you know, what's, we'll put this out there and, and go from there and then see what happens. And, uh, I don't have an idea for the next video, but we'll see. I, I might, there's a lot of topics. I don't really want to talk about any stuff. I don't want any hot takes on things <laughs> or like any, uh, like industry drama, you know, maybe some of it's almost impossible not to address. We'll see. Am I, am I, uh, I'm thinking about, talking about just being an artist. I'm thinking about talking about just being an artist in general. Like, what does it mean? Uh, are we really being artists? Are we not? Some of the things I think about, I don't have answers to any of these questions, but I kind of like just putting, putting thoughts and questions out there into the world and seeing what happens. Um, maybe I'll do that. I do like the idea. I, I do really like podcast. Um, I might try to do something like that, but I don't really know. Uh, I don't know how I would approach that. I'm interested in podcast, but I'd have to have, uh, I'd like to, I don't really know how to approach it. And it's something I had to have to think about. Um, if I, if I had anybody to, to talk with because i like the idea of of talking with someone because i think two head two talking heads are better than one yeah so how would i do that every now and then i'm not i'm not really sure i think it again it, it had to be something like a topic that's very specific and not 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 like a general broad audience thing so um that's something i'm thinking about too so we'll see um, I'm pretty optimistic about the future, um, not based off evidence, but just because, you know, evidence could tell you something different, but mostly because things just always kind of work out. Uh, I don't know how they're going to work out, but for some reason they always do. You think the world's crashing down uh, and then it just works out. I, I don't know how, but it does. So I don't, I'm not worried about anything. 
Okay, that's it for now. Um, see you next time, whenever that, whenever that is. Yeah, goodbye.